Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. In this video, I wanted to take a few moments to show you how you can store your application and infrastructure configurations inside of the AWS Systems Manager Parameter Store service. We're going to use AWS PowerShell module to store and retrieve these parameter values from a Systems Manager Parameter Store. So the first thing we need to do in the AWS PowerShell module is to set our default AWS region. So I'll call set default AWS region and then region, and we'll just do US East 2 here. Okay, so I'll hit F8 and run that, and that's going to put our global shell into the US East 2 or Ohio region. So now what I'm gonna do is use the get command command in PowerShell to search for anything that contains SSM followed by something parameter. So let's go ahead and run that, and you'll see a variety of different commands in PowerShell that are related to the Systems Manager Parameter Store service. So we'll, we'll be able to use the write SSM parameter command to create new parameters and store the values for them, and then we'll be able to use the get SSM parameter list command to retrieve a list of the parameters that we've stored, and then we'll also be able to use the get SSM parameter history to go back and look at previous versions of SSM parameters that we've stored. So let's go ahead and get started with a simple example. First, we're going to call write SSM parameter, and let's say that we're going to name it DB string. So we're gonna to connect to a database server from our application, and in this case, we need to store a database connection string. So the value parameter is just gonna be what our DB connection string is. So we'll say server equals my DB server dot DNS dot domain. And the next parameter we need to specify is simply the type. So there's a few different types of parameters. There's string or string list, which is a, an array of strings. And then there's also secure string. So we'll take a look at secure string in just a moment. But for now, we'll just specify the string type. So now we've stored this new variable or parameter rather called db string. And we can simply verify this by using the get SSM parameter command specify the name db string and sure enough we have our parameter name the type of string and the value of the parameter so what if you need to store a secret value and you want to make sure that that value is encrypted well we can actually encrypt the value that's stored in the parameter by specifying the type of secure string so we'll do type secure string here. And if we hit F8 to store that, it's going to say, hey, the parameter already exists. And so we can write a new version of the parameter by setting overwrite to true. So now we got a two in return. And basically that's indicating that we have version two of this parameter named db string. So version one is going to be an unencrypted string and version two is going to be a secure string value. Now you might wonder what key was used to encrypt this value. And the answer is that it used the default KMS key for your AWS account. So what you can do instead, if you wanna create a separate key for the purposes of encrypting this particular parameter is run the new KMS key command. And if we just hit F8 to run that, it's going to generate us a new encryption key and we can then take that encryption key ID and specify that we want to encrypt the value with that specific key by using the key ID parameter. So don't worry about the syntax highlighting there. That's just a, a simple syntax highlighting bug. So we'll hit F8 and run that command. And we've now stored a version three of our parameter. So version one is unencrypted. Version two is encrypted with the default key. And version three, we encrypted with a custom key. So now if we call get SSM parameter, we're only going to get back the latest version of the parameter. And you'll see that the value is this long encrypted string. So in order to retrieve the unencrypted value, we simply tack on the with decryption parameter to the get SSM parameter command, and we'll set that to true. So as you can see, we have decrypted the value and we now get the plain text value returned to us. So basically the parameter store service has called out to KMS to decrypt this value so that we don't have to make a separate API call ourselves. That is wrapped for us. And as a developer, you only need to worry about calling get SSM parameter and just specify that you want to decrypt. 
Now you don't need to specify the key that you want to decrypt with because the encrypted value actually contains the identifier of the key that it was encrypted with. So what that means is that all you have to do is just worry about retrieving the parameter, specify the parameter name, specify that you want it to be decrypted, and the key management service is actually going to figure out which key to use to decrypt that value and return it to you. So what if you need to go back and look at the version history of this parameter? So get SSM parameter is only giving us version 3, the latest version of the parameter. So what if we need to look at one of the historical versions? Well, we have another command called get SSM parameter history. And similarly, we'll use the name parameter and specify our DB string parameter. And if we hit F8, to run this code, you'll see that we get back a list of all the different parameter versions returned to us. Now, as you can see, the parameter values that were encrypted have been returned as encrypted values. And so we can specify the with decryption and set that to true. And that's going to take these encrypted values for versions two and three. It'll pass them through KMS, and then it will go ahead and just decrypt that value before it returns it to us. Now, Something to note from an identity and access management policy perspective is that you need to make sure that your program does have access through an IAM role or an IAM user account. And those IAM roles or users should have an attached policy that grants permission to the specific parameter that you're trying to retrieve using its ARN. But you'll also have to make sure that the user or role has permission to the KMS key that was used to encrypt the value so that it's able to call the decrypt operation as well. So you need to make sure that you grant the decrypt operation in KMS, even though we aren't calling that API directly. So one more thing that I wanted to look at is how we can use regular expressions to force a particular value on a parameter. So when we called the write SSM parameter command before, we simply specified a name, a type, and a value. But now what we can do is specify the allowed pattern. So let's say that we wanted to enforce you know, a uh, server equals IP address type of regular expression, we can actually do that. So let's go ahead and just specify that our allowed pattern is going to be server followed by an equal sign followed by any character times two. So we expect two characters of any type following the equal sign. So let's go ahead and call this my new DB string. And we'll try to set the value. We'll set the type first to just string. And we'll try to set the value to server equals 1.1.1.1. And so we'll go ahead and wrap that in single quotes here. We'll hit F8 to try to run that. And sure enough, we get the expected error, which is the parameter value cannot be validated against the allowed pattern. Server equals a period, which is any character in a regular expression, times two. So any, char any two characters. And so we've actually got a bunch of characters here. And so let's just set it to server equals IP. So if we hit F8 there, sure enough, we have successfully stored version one of a new parameter called my new DB string. So as a final step, let's go ahead and just call the get SSM parameter list command. And this is going to show us a list of all of the parameters that we have inside of the current region that we've selected, which is US East 2. And if you'd prefer in PowerShell to see this in more of a tabular format instead of a uh, list format like this, you can actually just pipe it into format table dash auto size, and that will give you a slightly more readable format here. So you can actually see the key ID that was used to encrypt it, the description, uh, the allowed pattern, and who actually last modified that particular parameter, as well as the date and time that the parameter was last modified. So there's a lot of useful information here that will help you to manage your parameters. Now remember that you can use these parameters from any of the AWS SDKs. So even though we're using PowerShell to actually configure these parameters and write them, you can write PowerShell-based applications that then read and consume those values, or you can write Python-based applications or Java applications that consume these parameters that you've stored up inside of your AWS account. So feel free to use the language of your preference. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.